Genesis 25. Let's begin with verse 24. This is a very familiar story to you Bible readers about Esau and Jacob. And we want to look at this tonight. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three scores years old when she buried them. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his benson. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob saw a pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, he said, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. For I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the port to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright. Unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up, and he went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Won't <clears throat> you look back with me to verse 32? It says, And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright be to me? What profit shall this birthright be to me? I want to talk to us for a little while from that scripture. Well, I try not. I try not to hold you long. But but I do have this on my heart tonight. We don't we don't want to deal with Jacob. I've I've heard Jacob preach, and there's nothing wrong with that. I preached on Jacob. Jacob wrestling with the Lord. We use Jacob in many different things in preaching. But tonight, if the Lord would help me, I'd like for us to look at Esau and deal with Esau. This is what I would love to talk about tonight. I'd love for us to look at Esau and his weakness and His overmastering temptation that really got a hold to Esau. Come on, church. I hope you'll I hope you'll pray for me tonight. I really do. 
I really do. I apologize for my voice. I wish my voice was stronger. But nevertheless, I feel like God's debt with me lay something on my heart. I really do. I really do. You'll just bear with me and let me take my time right here tonight and preach to us. I tell you, I feel the Lord. You see, Esau became a man of the field. He was a man of the field. And being largely a person of impulse, Esau was in a crisis. He was in a crisis. He had become weak. He had become faint. And he was in dire need of something. Come on. Come on, help me right here. In a he was ready to the, satisfy his desire, whatever the cost might be. Just on quick impulse, not even weighing the things out, not even counting the cost. Come on, help me right here. Help me. I, I'd love to speak to somebody right here tonight. I, I really would. I really would. You might get to make the choice because you are a free moral agent. And you can make the choice. But there's one thing I want you to listen. I want you to listen to this preacher right here tonight. You can make that choice, but you cannot choose the consequences of your choice. Amen. There's a lot of them tonight. Come on, help me right here. If they'd have had their life to live over, if they could flip back some pages, They'd have wished they'd have never made that choice. Come on. I didn't realize, Brother Head, that the consequences was going to be this. I didn't realize it was going to be this. I've known of a lot, and I want to tell you something. I I know that we preach to our young people, and and, uh, I'm for our young people. I really am. I'm grateful and thankful for every young person that's right here. I really am. I really am. But did you know that some of our young people are suffering from the consequences that the choice of mother and dad made? Come on, come on, help me. Come on. The Lord dealt with me, and I want to preach to you what the Lord dealt with me about. I really do. Here it was with Esau. Esau despised his birthright. He didn't figure it was going to be no profit to him. He didn't figure he was going to have no need for it. So Esau was willing to get rid of it. He felt like there was a time, and, and Jacob saw the time. Come on. Come on, Esau. Go, come on, send me your birthright. Just for a little bowl of stew, a little bowl of pottage, his birthright. You know what was Esau's problem? Is the same problem with a lot of people today. Esau was attracted by the present. Come on. That was Esau's problem. Now, what's going on right now? And Esau was attracted by the present. Come on. He lost sight of the future and what was in store for him. Are we real quiet right here tonight? We real quiet right here tonight. We really are. We really are. But he lost sight of what was ahead of him. 
he lost sight of his goal. Is that not what? I want to tell you something, church. I've been praying to God here lately. I don't want something that's happened 50 years ago. God knows the day and the hour and the time that we're living in right now. Come on. I don't want to be preaching something that's going to be for 50 years back. And this gospel has never grown old. I hope you all pray for me tonight. I really would. I really would. And if some of you good saints of God, Holy Ghost, be a people, I mean, if you want to fall to your knees and go to pray, it's not going to bother me. Because I feel like God is wanting to do some. God's been a dealing and a dealing and a dealing. Come on, help me right here. But we are thinking about the present. For some reason or another right here tonight, I feel like there's probably somebody right here that God's dealt with me. Come on, about this message right here. And if he's dealt with me about it, there is no doubt in my mind he's dealing with you about it. Come on, y'all going to help me right here for a little while. Uh, don't, don't, don't get scared on me. And don't, don't, as the old black preacher said, don't draw back from me. Come on, get a little closer to me. Come on, can you say amen? Come on. Help me right here for a little while. But I feel like there's somebody right here tonight that you are attracted by the present. It's what's going on right now. What is happening right now. I want to tell you something, dear child. It is not worth selling out your Christian heritage over. It is not worth losing your soul over. Come on, help me right here. That, that, that should be the most valuable thing of all is our soul and where our soul is going to spend eternity. But it bothers me in this day and hour that people that, that, that the frivolous little things that can come up, come on, that, that really doesn't mean nothing, my friend. Come on, help me right here for a little while. And yet they'll sell their birthright. Come on, can you say amen? Oh, you might have been faint. Come on, help me right here for a little while. But the Bible said they did wait upon the Lord that they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as he go. Come on, oh, now, come on, sweet Lamb of God. I'm a feeling the Lord right here tonight. I'm a feeling the Holy Ghost one more time is a reaching for somebody right here tonight in this service. But we are being drawn and we are being attracted by the present at what's going on right now. Come on, help me preach, help me preach. You see, I thought about Esau. I'm going to take my time tonight. I'm going to take my time to preach to us. Lord, help me. I thought about him without self-control. Without spiritual insight, come on, and without capacity even to know what spiritual issues were. Help me, help me. Judging things by immediate profit and material advantage. Come on. In other words, what was it about Esau? Come on. Help me, help me, help me. Wouldn't things be a lot better sometimes if we could just get beyond self? Wouldn't things, come on, I want to come on and I, I, I want to say it. Wouldn't it be a lot easier sometimes? I know that we're never to blame for anything. If it hadn't been for my brother. If it hadn't been for that sister. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Are y'all praying, church? Are y'all praying right here tonight? If we could just get beyond self. Come on, help me, help me, help me right here for a while. No wonder in Genesis 25 and 32 it said, Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Hebrews 12 and 16, the writer there 
said, called Esau a profane person, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. I mean, what was he talking about there? What, what does the word profane mean? It means not blasphemous, but simply secular. Come on. Judging things by earthly standards without spiritual aspiration. I mean, lack of appreciation of spiritual values. Come on. Is, is that not what we are seeing today? Is that not the message of the day and the hour that you and I are living in? Come on, where people at one time shouted under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, help me right here. Did the devil come by and offer them something, just some little old something or another, when, it, when the devil caught them at a faint state, somewhere, just like it was right here with Esau? Come on, and come on, say, come on, and sell me your birthright. Come on, help me right here. And then we begin to be drawn, and we begin attracted by the present night. My friend, and we feel like that we don't need it. Come on, help me right here for a little while. I want to tell you, church, there is so much pleasure in this day and hour that you and I are living in that there is people that think they can get by without God. There is people that's having a form of godliness, but they are denying the power there are. Sweet Lamb of God, come on, we are living in pearliest days, my friend. Come on, help me right here for a little while. For they are lovers of pleasure. More than they are lovers of God. Oh, sweet lamb, what is it that the devil has baited you with, my friend? What is it that the devil is a drawing on you with, my friend? Oh, the day you are being attracted by the present. Come on. But it's not going to pay at the end, my old sweet lamb of God. I'm a feeling the Lord here tonight in this house. Oh, sweet lamb of God, church. I don't know when I have ever felt a seriousness in my heart as I'm a feeling right here tonight for somebody under the sound of my voice. Come on, I'm going to say it one more time. I know I'm a hearing a little old voice tonight. I've heard that voice before. You are way out in left field and you've missed it tonight. I'm going to say it one more time. I would to God the devil would get in his place. Come on, help me, church. I want to tell you what I'm fixing to do right here. I'm fixing to plead the blood of the Lamb over this service right here tonight. I'd love to see somebody get liberated in their soul and get help from God. Sweet Lamb of God, come on. Because there's somebody here tonight under the sound of my voice, you are being attracted by the present. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Come on, church, come on. It's not that you are blasphemous. It's not that. Come on, come on, help me right here. Come on, church. I want to tell you, The devil knows he's not going to be able to get you to do a lot of things. He knows how far that you're going to go. But if he can get you attracted just to the present, come on, help me right here for a little while. Oh, I wish y'all would pray. I really do. I wish you would pray. Come on, I wish that somebody right here tonight would pray. Pray for this preacher. That's what I'm talking about. I wish you would pray for this preacher right now. Because I'm needing the Lord to help me. I'm needing the Holy Ghost to help me right here. I've been telling my wife to pray just about every night in this service. And I feel like telling her again tonight, and I will. But I want some of you to come on, church. And that's what the devil's afraid of right here tonight, that we are going to bind together and we're going to pray. I want to tell you what. I walk around this church house in here this afternoon uh, praying and seeking the Lord. I don't know why in the world it come to me, but it come to me. Over there in Corinthians, I believe, where it is, talking about the strongholds. Come on. I I begin to pray. I begin to plead the blood of the Lamb. I begin to ask God to bring down those strongholds. Come on, church. Help me right here for a little while. Oh, Lamb of God. Come on. But I want to tell you something, church. I believe that God is still able to bring down those strongholds. I believe that God is still able to bring down those walls. I believe that God is still able to bring down those walls that divide. Come on. Help me right here. I still believe that our God is able to restore fellowship and able to restore love. Come on. Come on. Can you say amen? I still believe that our God has got a spirit of reconciliation. Come on. Can you say amen? Help me right
right here. But not only that, to restore my friend, but I feel like there's somebody right here tonight. You are being attracted by the present, my friend. And it's not going to pay off at the end. And you're going to regret, my friend. There's a lot of them tonight that's a walking around in a regret. It says, I wish a thousand times that I'd have never done it. But listen to me, sir. Listen to me, ma'am. You don't have to make that mistake. You don't have to be that foolish. You don't have to go that route because God has given you an opportunity right here tonight to make a turn, my friend, and a turn and a look to Him. The writer is warning us he is warning us to look diligently, lest there be among us any profane person, as he saw, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Look among us. And see if there be one profane person. Sweet Lamb of God, I'm a feeling the Holy Ghost here. I'm a feeling the Holy Ghost here. I want to tell you something. The scripture comes to us. Sister Mary, I believe it's found in Third John, just that little book there where it says, Look to yourself. Look to yourselves. That we lose not the things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. It didn't say to look across the aisle. It didn't say to look to the pew in back of you. It didn't say to look to the pew in front of you. But it said look to yourselves. Come on, come on, come on church, come on church. I want to tell you, I, I, I will tell you how I feel right here tonight. God is wanting to become very personal. And God is wanting to be very personal with somebody right here. Come on, help me right here for a little while. You know, you know, you know what the devil would love for you to be satisfied with? The devil would love for you to be satisfied with a religion. Come on, help me right here. And there is a lot of religions in our land. Come on, help me right here, Floyd. You're saying, oh, Brother Lynn, there is no way, and I hope I don't create no problem right here tonight and cause no controversy. There is no way that I would ever fall for the Muslim religion. You don't have to. Come on, just get away from what you know is the truth. Come on, the devil doesn't care if you don't become a Muslim. Just don't get away. Come on, help me right here. If he can just get you away from what you know is the truth. Come on, sweet Lamb of God. I'm a feeling the Lord right here. Not I really am. I really am. I'm a feeling something rising up within me. I really am. And I know some of you say, well, brother, you, you look so calm and cool and collective up there with your arms and laid right across. It's not that. Come on, if you could feel my heart racing right here tonight. Come on, if you could see my nerves are jittering in my body right here tonight. I want to tell you what I'm a feeling. I'm a feeling the Holy Ghost is a reaching for somebody right here tonight. Come on, help me right here for a little while. Come Come on, come on, help me right here. The devil wants you to be satisfied with being religious. Come on, come on, help me right here. Come on, sweet lamb of God. Well, I'm all right. Come on. I don't have to agree with everything that Brother Mike agrees with. I don't have to agree with everything that Brother Lynn agrees with. You might not, but you better agree with what this word says. Come on, can you say amen? Because the devil, come on, church, that is the trap of our age, my friend. The devil is getting a lot of them where they are satisfied. Just with a religion. Come on, help me right here for a while. But I want to tell you what the Holy Ghost is wanting to do tonight. He's wanting to pull you from a religion that you'll have a relationship with God, my friend. That's what God is wanting to do. He's wanting you to have a relationship with this sweet Lamb of God. I'm going to feel the glory of the Lord right here tonight in this house. Come on, church. That is what 
is taking our country down. That is what is taking our churches down. Come on, help me right here. You know too much. Come on, and come on, and you are being attracted by the present. Come on, help me right here for a little while. Go down the road to some other church. Come on, you will not find the Spirit of the Lord. You will not feel what you are feeling right here. Come on, help me right here for a little while. And the devil's trying to get you a peace. He's trying to sell you out. He's trying to get you attracted by some kind of a religion. Tree. Come on, it might even have pity calls wrote over the door. Come on, but are they holiness, my friend? Do they preach God's word? Do they love God? Come on, help me. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. Come on, brother. Feel the Lord. I feel God right here tonight. I want to tell you, you might turn your back and you might walk away from God. But you're not going to do it without Him reaching for you. And you are not going to do it without Him drawing you and trying to pull you. Come on, help me right here. Oh, sweet Lamb of God. Oh, I'm feeling the Lord. I'm feeling the Lord right here. I really am. Church, we are in a serious hour. I don't know who I'm talking to here tonight, but God does. Listen. Esau. I feel like one of the reasons he probably sold his birthright was to the fact he did not really want the responsibility. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, fathers. You're the head of the house. You're the priest of the home. And you have a responsibility. What happened to Achan? He got attracted to a Babylonian garment. A little gold, a little silver. And he didn't even have no need for it. Any need whatsoever. But did you know the consequences of it? His whole family. He had the right to make the choice. But he couldn't choose the consequences. I'm feeling the Lord here. I really am. I tell you what, I'm feeling conviction. I know I'm going a lot slower. I know I'm not out there in the middle of that aisle. But I'm feeling the Lord right here tonight. Come on, come on, help me right here tonight. You know what was, you know, you know, uh, uh, some things about Esau. Esau was hasty. Esau become careless. Come on, help me right here. Help me right here. Oh, Lamb of God. He was fond of the things of life. Come on. Help me. I, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish right here tonight that I knew who the God of heaven was leading this message right here too. I want to tell you, I'd come back there to you, and I don't even do that. I don't even do that unless God definitely directs me that way. Come on. I'd come back to you. I'd try to embrace you with as much love from my heart as I could and tell you, don't be hasty. Come on, help me right here for a little while. Come on, don't be careless. Come on, church. We've seen too many that the devil has come right in among us. Come on. For that they were so hasty. For that they had become so careless. Come on, church. We'll never hear it fall from their lips. Not a lot of them. Some of them will, my kid, my friend, when they get a repenting heart. My, Come on, help me right here. But there is some of them that will never admit. Come on, I was too hasty. I was the one that was careless. Come on, but now I'm regretting the steps that I took. I'm regretting the decision that I made. Come on, come on. I want to tell you how I feel right here tonight, church. From the depth of my soul and from my spirit, I'm a feeling a whole 
Holy Ghost is a quickening somebody right here tonight and trying to get you not to be so hasty and not to be careless in the decision that you're going to make, my friend. Oh, sweet Lamb of God, come along, glory to God. If you've never prayed, say, pray right here tonight. Come on, there could be somebody right here tonight that's under the sound of my voice that is in the valley of decision and you are weighing this thing out. You are pondering it up. You are tossing it around. I would to God tonight that you will take another glimpse of Calvary. You'll get another glimpse of the cross and you'll get another glimpse of Jesus and Him being crucified. That's what we my God. I'm a feeling the glory of the Lord right here tonight in this house, my friend. Come on, don't be attracted by the present. Oh, I'm preaching too long. I'm preaching too long. I know I am. I'm preaching too long. I'm preaching too long. You see, what Esau, there was a day that came that he wanted his birthrights back. But he wasn't able to get them. Come on, he wasn't able to get it. Come on, church, help me right here for a while. Come on, oh, Lamb of God. This is some, come on. This is not playing a game of marbles, my friend. It's not doing that. Come on, help me right here. This is not choosing up and playing a game of ball. It's not doing that. I'll tell you what you're playing with tonight, and that is your soul. Come on, help me right here. And that is the estate of your home, and that is the estate of your family. Come on. Oh, sweet Lamb of God, I'm a feeling the Lord right here tonight. Hey, you don't have to wait for this preacher right here tonight to give the altar call. You don't have to wait for a special song. I want to tell you what you need to do. You just need to obey the Spirit of God. Come on. You just need to obey the call of God. What the Lord is to come on, help me right here. I'm a feeling somebody right here tonight that the Holy Ghost is a speaking to and a dealing with right here tonight in this house. Thirty pieces of silver. Judas Iscariot betrayed the Lord. Thirty pieces of silver. What happened to Judas? I'll tell you what happened to Judas. He got attracted by the present. Come on, church. Come on, church. Sweet Lamb of God, I'm a feeling the Lord right here now. He got attracted by the present. But what, 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 what began to muster up in the Judas S. Carrot? Come on, help me right here. I'll tell you what happened to Judas. There's a lot of people try to persuade me you might have your own idea and opinion about him. There's a lot of people that tells me that he never was one of the disciples. But I believe that he was chosen of Jesus, just like the others. Come on, I believe that he was the treasury of the twelve. I really do. I really do. Come on, help me right here. I believe he saw the hand of God to work just like some of them others. But there was something that happened to Judas. He become careless. Come on, can you say amen? Help me right here for a little while. But not only that, he become critical. Come on. We could have took that, Mary, that you have you have broke the alabaster box. We could have took that and sold it and give it to the poor. Not only he become careless, but he become critical. Come on, help me right here. I want to tell you something. A critical spirit is not working. Down and going to hell over my friend. Come on, help. Oh, sweet Lamb of God. I'm a feeling the Lord right here tonight. Oh, I wish you'd help me preach right here for a little while. But come on, sweet Lamb of God. But not only he become careless, not only he become critical, he got with the wrong crowd, my friend. And he betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. And that's exactly what the devil would love to do with you. I want to tell you what, everything that shakes and quivers and speaks in some kind of a language is not of God. Come on, help me right here for a little while. If they don't marriage up to a sanctified life, i tell you what I'd do. I'd leave it alone. Come on, can you say amen? It's not worth falling the crowd after. I don't care how big the church is. I don't care how great of a chandelier they got in. I'd rather be among a handful and feel the spirit in the presence of Almighty God. I don't want to be led astray by a crowd. Attracted by the present. Am I right, preacher? He brought the money back. Try to give it back. They didn't even want it. They didn't even want it. Am I right, preacher, that he never found place 
for repentance? Am I safe in saying, Brother Jerry, that he was attracted by the present and he lost his soul for eternity? You're smart enough to know about him, man. Man, this is altogether strange right here for me. It's altogether strange. To sell out that cheap and to lose your soul, to be attracted by the present. Esau said, I don't have no need for that birthright. You know what G Judas was really saying? I don't have no need for Jesus. But he found out that the 30 pieces of silver did not satisfy like he thought that it would satisfy. What shall a man profit if he gain the whole world and then lose his own soul? Then the Bible says, what shall he give in exchange for his soul? Help me, help me, help me, help me. Sweet Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that Judas by transgression failed that he might go to his own place. He by transgression failed that he might go to his own place. When Jesus had said, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. Come on. He's in my father's house of many mansions. But Judas, by transgression, failed. That he might go to his own place. Church, if you've ever prayed, pray. I feel the Lord right here. I feel the Lord right here. I really do. I feel the Holy Ghost right here in this house. I really do. I really do. I really do. I don't know where you're at, ma'am. I don't know where you at, sir. But I want to tell you what, you might be hid from me. You might be hid from this pastor. You might be hid from others, but you're not hid from the Holy Ghost. You're not hid from the Holy Ghost. He knows exactly where you're at right here tonight. Come on, come on, come on. Help me right here tonight. Come on, church. Oh, Lamb of God. I, I, my mind is going so many different ways right now. I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Come on, help me. It's just like these two men was riding by in this, this fine, fabulous place one day's hill, this house set up on the hill, and the green lawn all down in front of them, the white fences and all this stuff. And one man is a real estate man, and, and one the man that was riding with him and looking for a place to buy asked him, says, says, what is the value of that place right there? How much is that place right there? And the real estate man said, really, I don't know what the value of that place is. But he said, I know what it cost the last man to own it. And the man looked at him kind of astonished and said, what did it cost him? He said, it cost him his life. Come on. He said, what do you mean by that? He said, because he got carried away with the cares of life. Come on. What was it? It was being attracted by the present. Come on. Can y'all, y'all, y'all can help me preach right here for a little while longer. I want to tell you, oh, Lamb of God, I want somebody to be getting ready for the piano. Come on. I want somebody to be getting ready with a song right here tonight. I want to tell you, I feel like there's somebody right here tonight. The devil has got you. Come on. Away and in the balances. Come on. And the pendulum is a swing. And come on. I want to tell you, so I tell you what I'm a reaching for. I tell you what I'm a pulling for right here tonight. I don't want you to be found wanting my friend. Come on. I want to tell you, if you can feel the love that is a coming from my heart right here tonight. I want to try to help somebody. I want to tell you, I'm a feeling the Holy Ghost right here tonight that's wanting to help somebody. Church, you've ever prayed, pray right here tonight. If you feel like standing to your feet and a praying, ever how you feel like a praying, but I feel like there's somebody right here tonight that's under the sound of my voice that you want to come to this altar. Come on, help me. Forget about Brother Mike. Forget about Brother Lee and Head. I want to tell you what, it's you and God right here tonight. And God is wanting to become very personal with you. And God's on a deal with you. He has dealt with you. And He is a dealing with you. And He is a pulling on you, my friend. Come on. Oh, Lamb of God. No, no, no. A thousand times. No. I'm not saying you went out and robbed a bank. I'm not 
saying you've went out and committed adultery. I'm not a saying that. But I'm a saying you're being attracted by the present, my friend. But the Holy Ghost is a pulling. The Holy Ghost is a dealing. The Holy Ghost is a wooing tonight in wanting you to come back home. While everybody stands and no one's looking around. God has dealt. And God has moved. And God is a working. One more time right here in our midst, church. Now what? Are we going to do with the Spirit of God that we are feeling? But, Brother Head, if they hadn't have done that, if they hadn't have done this, I want to tell you, as sweet as I know how, and as kind as I know how. If I'd have wanted to have been bitter, I could be bitter. Come on. But I chose not to be bitter. I chose to be blessed of God. I chose to have His blessings. If I'd have wanted to be bitter, I could be bitter. I could be filled with bitterness. There's not a one of us right here not on the sound of my voice that we've always been treated right. There's not a one of us right here on the sound of my voice that we've always been talked to right. But I want to tell you something. There's a lot of it that I just pass right on and I keep looking to Calvary because I, I want to tell you something, church. Listen to me. I'm, I feel like I'm talking to somebody. We are living in a very bitter world. If we want to be bitter, we've got every right to be bitter. But I choose not to be bitter. I feel the love of God in this house. I really am. I feel the Holy Ghost here, and I feel like there's somebody here. God's are dealing with your heart. Won't you step out? Won't you step out? Won't you step out? Church, can we just raise our hands? Can we just raise our hands right here tonight? Can we just ask God to move and to work? Can we? I'm going to tell you how I feel right here tonight. I feel the love of God that's flowing in this service right here tonight. You know what? He's wanting you to be drawn by His love. He's not wanting you to be attracted by the present. Sing, sing, children. Sing, sing. I've always lived a life of just pretend. A plastic heart inside with no peace within. Then I stepped out of the dark. Lord, you opened up my Revealing all my secrets, hidden sin, and I'll go down seven times. How about it? How about it? How about it? It's up to you now, my friend. It's up to you. Oh, are you praying, church? Are we praying? Are we praying? You're here tonight and you feel your need. I want to tell you, if you come down, or even if you just raise your hand right where you're at, and you indicate to me that you're wanting prayer and you're needing prayer, you would love to have prayer, I'll tell you. I'd be making my way to you. I really am. And I really would. But I feel like the Holy Ghost has already made His way to you. And He's a drawing. He's a pulling. He's a pulling. Come on, I don't know who I'm speaking to here tonight. 
But if you're not careful, you're going to let some little old something that doesn't really amount to all of that much, it's going to take you down spiritually. Come on. You see, Esau represents the flesh. Esau become concerned about his physical need. That he forgot about the spiritual need. But I feel like there's somebody right here tonight on the sound of my voice. You're crying out. Deep down inside of you, you're crying out unto God. We might not can hear that. But God is a hearing that. And God is wanting to visit you. And God is wanting to help you. Come on, church. Come on, church. Do you feel your need to come around this altar here? Any of you. Any of you. Step out and come. Step out and come. Step out and come. We cannot afford to be attracted by the present. I want to tell you, if you want to come as a family, if you want to come as a home, I'll be making my way down to this front. I'd be stepping out from where I'm at. And I'd be making a break toward God. I wouldn't let the attraction of the present to steal my victory. I wouldn't let it take away my joy. I wouldn't let it capture my song. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Come on, church. I have preached to you the burden of my heart. I have preached to you what God's laid on my heart. It's not worth it, church. We are living a serious and a dangerous hour. And God is reaching. But not only that, God is working. God is receiving and God is restoring. He's reconciling. Come on tonight. Obey the Lord, saints. A plastic heart inside. With no peace within. I don't know one thing that's going on here. I don't even know the brother. But God knows the heart. God knows all things. 